Cardiomyopathies are diseases of the heart muscle tissue. Cardiomyopathies represent a heterogeneous group of diseases that often lead to progressive heart failure with significant morbidity and mortality. When talking about cardiomyopathies, we often focus on the ventricular heart muscles, the bottom two chambers of the heart. Remember the heart is a muscular pump which pumps blood all over our body. The cardiac muscle fibers or cells have a single nucleus. They are branched and joined to one another by intercalated discs. The intercalated discs contain gap junctions. The intercalated discs and gap junctions form a syncytium of cardiac cells, allowing the heart to contract in a coordinated, unified manner. The desmosomes hold the fibers together when the heart contracts. And the actual contractile units of the cardiac muscles are the sarcomeres, which is made up of myosin and actin filaments. These two filaments slide past one another to cause a muscle contraction. What happens is that the sarcomere shortens during muscle contraction. This is called systole. Systole is when the ventricles contract and pumps blood out. The sarcomere lengthens and this is where the cardiac muscle cells relax. The relaxation process is termed diastole. This is when the ventricles fill with blood preparing itself for another contraction. Because we're focusing on cardiac muscle cells and cardiomyopathies, we need to learn some fundamental physiology. Remember, there are three major determinants of myocardial performance, preload, afterload, and contractility. Focusing on the ventricular cardiac muscle cells, preload is the amount of blood entering the ventricles during diastole when the heart is relaxing. An increase in preload means a stronger contraction and this relationship is the frank starling relationship, which can be depicted with this graph here with di end diastolic volume on the x-axis, how much blood enters the ventricles, versus stroke volume, which is the volume of blood ejected by the heart with each uh, contraction. To put it simply, as more blood enters the ventricles during diastole, this increases the length of uh, the resting sarcomere, which builds up tension, kind of like a spring. Tension builds up as the ventricles fill with more blood and then bang, during systole, when the sarcomere shortens, it has all this tension and so it just increases the contractile force and therefore the stroke volume. An increase in end diastolic volume therefore increases stroke volume normally. Afterload is the other determinant of cardiac muscle function, and this is the force the cardiomyocytes must overcome to pump blood out of our body. Contractility of the heart muscle can be independent of preload, uh, and for example, the autonomic nervous system, ions can influence cardiac contractility. To finish off this basic anatomy and physiology, diagram. You know, troponin is attached to the structures here and is important and involved in muscle contraction. Cardiomyocytes also contain many mitochondria to produce large amounts of ATP, which is needed because the heart muscles always demand this energy. It's constantly pumping. Dilated cardiomyopathy is the most common type of cardiomyopathy and is characterized by dilation and impaired contraction of one or both ventricles. Blood fills the ventricles during diastole. During systole, there is impaired contraction. The dilated ventricles are unable to eject all the blood out of the heart, resulting in reduced ejection fraction. Thus, the clinical features of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy include symptoms of heart failure, including dyspnea, orthopnea, and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Clinically, there is the S3 gallop, the most specific sign for heart failure. The S3 gallop, or the S3 sound, occurs just after S2 when the mitral valves open. 
allowing passive filling of the left ventricle. The S3 sound is actually produced by the large amount of blood striking a very compliant left ventricle. Dilated cardiomyopathy can be a primary condition, as in genetics or inherited, or dilated cardiomyopathy can be secondary to something else, such as a viral infection, specifically Coxsackie B virus, substance abuse, such as alcohol and cocaine, coronary artery disease. However, coronary artery disease causing cardiomyopathy is sometimes called ischemic cardiomyopathy, and then you also have valvular diseases causing uh, what's called valvular cardiomyopathy. Other causes include uh, arrhythmias. As the ventricles dilate, they also can impact valvular function of the heart and results in um, common complications such as mitral valve insufficiency as well as tricuspid insufficiency. On echocardiogram, you can see a dilated ventricle. This echocardiogram shows the left side of the heart. Here you can see reduced ejection fraction from the systolic impairment and possibly normal or reduced ventricular wall thickness. You may see a component of mitral insufficiency. Here is a real-time echocardiogram of a person with dilated cardiomyopathy. Again, note the dilated left ventricle. There is thinning of the left ventricular wall and systolic function is severely reduced. Treatment for dilated cardiomyopathy is the same for heart failure therapy. You know, fluid restriction, daily weights, diuretics, ACE inhibitor, beta blockers, and spironolactone. There is a role for implantable cardioverter defibrillators, um, or ICDs, in people who have fought heart failure and who are at risk of dying from uh, arrhythmia. The last line, obviously, is a heart transplant.